two more things. Have it real benefits, real improvements to life. Wiki. Shopping. What? Elections? Directions. Absolutely. Directions are great. Weather. Billion years under 30. Great. Absolutely. I think my slide uh, is. It's the next one. Great. Awesome. Uh, well, today I'm going to talk about student social entrepreneurship. And as we just talked about, the internet obviously has benefited our lives tremendously. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of the world doesn't have access to the benefits that we have. Take a look at this map. This map shows relative internet connection density all around the world. The areas that are lit up the brightest have the highest concentration of internet connections. Now if you take a look at uh, China and India, which represents about a third of the world's population, it's dark meaning that there aren't a lot of internet connections there. And therefore, a lot of people are not benefiting from what we just talked about. In 2008, some students from the University of Michigan in the School of Engineering decided to develop this device here. It's an uh, internet station. It's made of components that are off the shelf. You have a satellite dish, and you have a solar panel. The idea is that you can access the internet even in the most remote and rural communities around the world. And that's why they call this Imagine Africa. And then at the end of 2008, these students, with funding from Google, went to Kenya and deployed three stations. And suddenly, the lives of so many people were transformed. Students who once only had a limited amount of information from their textbooks suddenly had a wealth of information, research, access to research from the University of Michigan, from the faculty here. Um, merchants and farmers now had new opportunities to sell their goods and services in new markets. But the problem that arose was this project came to a standstill. Why? Because the students graduated. And therefore, the project couldn't continue. Social entrepreneurship is meant to solve this very problem. Social entrepreneurship says, I want to solve a problem over and over and over again, not just one time. Social entrepreneurship says, this is my career, this is my calling, this is not just volunteer work. And I want to say today, and make this the case, that universities are the best place to incubate and launch social ventures. If you think about it, at this university and others, there's a tremendous amount of resources. You have access to faculty, professors. If you're looking for legal counsel, go to the law school. If you're looking for some business planning, just go to the business school, right? It's a tremendous place to access all these different things. You can access technology. You can access, again, business. You can access. Uh, social work, uh, human empathy, and it's a tremendous opportunity to do some crazy things to affect the world. Um, what we did this past semester at the University of Michigan with the support of the College of Engineering is we launched a course called Social Venture Creation. And we believe that we brought students across different departments and put them into one room and let them work on change the world ideas, amazing things would happen. And we thought we'd bring up onto the stage today three students from our course who are working on some amazing ventures and let them share with you what they're working on to bring sustainable change to the world. So I'm going to invite Gaurav to come up here to talk about a community car sharing program. Thank you, Moses. Um, I want to talk about C2A2. It's an idea of peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. So I'm a dual degree student between the Ross School of Business and School of Natural Resources and Environment. Last year, I was sitting in a class, we were talking about what can we do to make the world sustainable. And you've heard the statistic, we need to reduce our energy consumption by 80% to reach sustainability. You know, it's a lofty goal, and I really hope we reach it. But what can you do in the interim? And a friend and I started talking, you know, the transportation sector takes a lot of energy, particularly private cars. So I said, what can we do? So I started thinking about my own car. So I thought about, you know, I love having a car. I love the convenience, I love the flexibility. But the idea is that 90% of the time, my car sits on the street parked, unused. And I guarantee most of your cars right now are sitting in a parking lot or on the street unused. So we said, there's a lot of people who also need access to their car. And it would be great if we could all take buses or bicycles to go somewhere, but that's not the practical solution right now. Well, what are those people who need cars? We can connect to the people who don't use their cars. So that's our solution. We want to take people who have cars and don't use it often. There's a lot of unused capacity. And people who need cars. So C2A2, our venture, connects these two people together. We, of course, take care of you know, the liabilities, the insurance, and the owner's increased cost. And the goal is that unused capacity, the owners can make money from. 
and of course, the renters get access. What is our goal from this? You know, we hope two things happen. One is goes towards that a lofty goal, reducing our energy consumption, to reduce our resources. Right now we sit in this red bubble. We use a lot of resources, we live in a very individual society. So the idea is that if we can introduce the concept of sharing, then we can go ahead and say, look, not only will we use less resources, but we can introduce a notion of community. There's a lot of organization working on sharing small things, like garden tools or you know tools. Um, uh, sorry about that. There's an organization called uh, sharesomesugar.com. You go in there, you can rent your tools. We want to take that and take big ticket items and share that amongst our community. So hopefully the goal is, by sharing, we can use less resources and introduce the concept of community. And our website will be up hopefully by mid-April. <laughs> oh, sorry. My apologies, I'm going to introduce Ashish, who's going to talk about Get Fresh Detroit. Food is a fundamental human right. Our mission at Get Fresh Detroit is to provide access to healthy and fresh food to low-income communities in Detroit. Detroit went from a city of 2 million people to 800,000 people in less than five decades, which means that half the houses in Detroit are empty. And of these half houses, half the houses don't have access to private transportation to go to a grocery store which means grocery stores in Detroit are not viable, which means, which leaves 550,000 people in Detroit with low access to fresh and healthy food, which means that they turn to fast food for their food, or they buy unhealthy foods from liquor stores, gas stores, and other corner stores. 92% of all food stamps in Detroit are spent in these places. And moreover, consumers pay a premium for spec. But what, if we could, but what if we could take these corner stores and make them part of the solution to the fresh food access problem in Detroit? Our idea is to package fresh food and sell it through these corner stores so that consumers have an option, uh, an, an accessible and affordable option to fresh food. At the same time, it is profitable and convenient for the retailers. We know we have to work with the community uh, in, in order to create the right solution. And to get our idea to fruition, we're moving to Detroit next month and launching our venture. By um, providing a choice for fresh food in Detroit, we hope to do our part um, in creating healthier communities. It, uh, it all sounds really simple, um, but ideas worth spreading usually are. Thank you. I'll pass it now to uh, Bo to talk about Imagine Africa. So we are Imagine Africa, and we are working to improve the quality of education in rural Kenya by helping teachers help their students. So I want to bring back this slide, uh, the map that you saw earlier. And as you can see, Africa is really dark, it's really unlit. So when I first saw this image, I was like, man, Africa doesn't have internet. We gotta get internet to Africa. But wait, when I step back one moment, I realized people, especially in rural Africa, don't even have access to basic healthcare, don't have access to basic electricity, or even clean drinking water. Why is internet such a big deal? Well, when we uh, started this project from the beginning, we as students, we kind of looked around our university and we kind of looked in awe at all the educational resources that we had access to, especially through the internet. So then we took a step and we looked at education in Kenya. So this is you know, a typical classroom in Kenya. And in a typical classroom in Kenya, you'll see typically one teacher to 45 students. And for that one classroom, you only have one textbook. Now, in Kenya, or I'm sorry, in, in the United States, teachers are typically recertified every two to three years. That means every one of those high school teachers that you guys had had to go back to school every two to three years and retake classes to help them have the best teaching methods as well as the most up-to-date information. But in Kenya, these teachers only get certified once and then they never get recertified ever again because they don't have the money to 
to go to university, they don't have the connections, they don't have any form of communication so that they can get reaccredited. So what's our solution? We want to bring a platform that allows these teachers to, to communicate without having to travel, you know, the hundreds of miles it takes to get to the nearest university. So if you look on this map, um, it's cut off at the bottom, but the orange splotches mean uh, GSM coverage, which is a typical cell phone service that you know, anyone can use on their cell phone. What most people don't know is you can purchase an off-the-shelf router and connect it to your computer and get internet. So what we're doing is, you can see the first generation prototype here, which was launched in Kenya three years ago. We're retrofitting it with a GSM router so that teachers all across Kenya can access the internet which will give them access to educators, which will allow them to connect with the Ministry of Education that gives millions of dollars every year to help fund their school. And most importantly, allow them to take online courses and receive additional education information so that they can be up to date with the latest teaching methods and resources. So, this picture was taken one year ago in one village and it made this one incredible experience happen. But what we plan to do is make this happen in thousands and hundreds of thousands of villages and schools all over Africa. Thank you. They didn't know this was going to be a relay race. Um, those three projects that Bo and Ashish and Gora presented exemplify the assumption that Moses and I had when we began this semester. We knew, or we believed, that the university was a great place for people to um, nurture their passions. But we knew quite often that if those passions have no outlet, you quite often find yourself this way, standing out in front of the graduate library on a snowy day, talking to anyone who will stop for you. And we knew quite often that being in any controlled environment can produce a sensation not unlike this. So whether you think of yourself as the fish looking out, or someone looking in at the fish, Think of this, I have a goldfish, I clean its tank, I clean its water, I feed it. After a while, it grows too big for its little bowl. And after a while, if you don't clean its tank, the water gets a little stagnant. This is a challenge to anyone working in a controlled environment, whether it's an academic department, a university, a corporation, a small business. You have to get out of your tanks. Our universities have become like this, which is We'll take scrupulous care of our own tanks. We'll develop technical competencies or extreme sing single linguistic proficiencies. But what we need to do is smash those tanks. And that's exactly what Moses and I hope to do with social venture creation. It's what we hope to continue doing. It's what I want to challenge you all to do. We're interested in creating an ecosystem that inspires entrepreneurship, particularly social entrepreneurship, where we can take the resources that we have at the university and build something that's closer to a tidal pool, a coastal reef, where things come in and out, where we don't worry about the world becoming stagnant because the constant inflow and outflow of information is dynamic and changing. That's what we hope our classroom has been like this semester. And we hope that we can turn that lonely person standing on the diag, urging the world to listen to their cause, to a pep rally where the university invites everybody and vice versa. We invite you to come to see the final presentations that four of our social ventures, which are about to launch themselves into the world, will give next Saturday morning, April 17th, from 10 to noon, in the Ross School of Business, Business School building. And please visit our website, Social Venture Creation, and go home and smash your fish tanks. Yeah.